Can the police protect you? How sure are you of your answer? This is Alan with Quarter Horse Arms. And in this podcast, I want to explore the idea or the question of whether or not police are able to protect you. And, you know, the answers are kind of surprising. In fact, I was surprised as I was doing some research. And, in fact, in one instance, the police recommended to somebody who was dealing with some sort of crazy ex, uh, their advice was get a gun. Because they couldn't be there. Now, am I saying the police officers and deputies and state troopers are bad? Absolutely not. Um, Their ability to protect you is really non-existent unless they happen to actually be there when the crime is being committed. And police are in short supply. Out where I live, um, the police department is missing one third of its officers. They're down like 50 uh, police officers. Um, And this is not unique to where I live. Police officers are retiring. Some of them are quitting. Some of them, you know, going into other fields or they're going to, you know, potentially other police departments that maybe pay better or better working conditions or whatever. Uh, So this is a case of, you know, something has to give somewhere. And do the police get a bad rep? Um, yeah, as a matter of fact, they did take a look at the riots that were triggered, um, when a nonviolent suspect, meaning Floyd, um, was killed by a police officer. Um, was he representative of the police force? Absolutely not. But in a high profile job, like, you know, being a law enforcement officer, you're under a lot more scrutiny in addition to being being placed into a lot more personal risk. All right. So having said all that, um, and I and trust me, I have a tremendous amount of respect for the law enforcement officers, the ones I've worked with um, and the ones I've interacted with. Um, and that includes the occasional one that, you know, may have given me a ticket for my possibly having exceeded the speed limit once or twice. Um, But that's neither here nor there. So the statistics and information I found was if the response time for the police is less than five minutes, there was a 60% chance of them making an arrest. If the response time was more than five minutes, there was a 20% chance of them making an arrest. So huge, huge difference in response time and the probability of catching the criminal. And so having found that, I was going, okay, what are the actual response times? And some of these were pretty impressive. You know, like Chicago at 3.45 minutes. That's an impressive response time for a city the size of Chicago. Um, San Francisco, 5.46 minutes. Um, then we get to some others at the, you know, further end, you know, you're looking at, you know, Atlanta, uh, nine and a half minutes with some calls taking more than 33 minutes. Um, Denver at 13 minutes. It could be the high altitude is affecting, you know, car engines, radio reception. Just kidding on that, by the way. Um, Okay, and then we get to some ones that were incredibly like, what the heck is going on there? Uh, And again, a lot of this is related to shortage of law enforcement officers. Uh, New Orleans reported 128-minute average response time, so over two hours. Um, If it was an emergency, that time was cut to 28 minutes. But if it was a non-threatening situation like burglary, their response time was about three hours. And I I forgot what city it was, but they were very proud that they had gotten police response time down from like 17 minutes to 13 minutes. Um, 
and, and again, lots of variability in what's going on. Now, the one thing that showed up in every study um, that, I, that I hunted down was that if there's an active shooter involved, the response times drop to three minutes nationwide. So when they got word that there was an active shooting, the police or any law enforcement agency, all those officers had a three minute response time. So they respond almost immediately. I mean, three minutes is pretty impressive. So from the time they get notified till the time to they get to the scene where an active shooter is located, three minutes has gone by. And some of you are going to go, well, that's pretty good. I don't have to worry about anything. A lot can happen in three minutes. And the police will be among the first to tell you that they can't protect you. It's not that they don't want to. Well, that might be the case for some of you. I mean, you know, maybe the cops don't like you. All right, all right, let Alan hang out to dry. You know, I didn't like his last podcast. Um, but the reality is that, again, they have to get somewhere. You know, in other words, they've got to be able to respond. Three minutes, for those of you that own firearms, um, imagine just taking an average pistol. You know, like a 9 millimeter pistol. In three minutes, how many shots can you get off including reloading within that th three minute period so if you're in a place where you've got a gunman who's got you know a very target rich environment you can get off an awful lot of rounds in three minutes or less and that the response time means that just means to get there that that doesn't include time to figure out what's actually going on so then you're gonna go you know hey alan what about Uvalde, Texas? Well, not exactly a shining moment for that school district police department. They were there, what, over an hour and while they had an active shooter in a classroom. So within that hour, what was that gunman able to do? Well, unfortunately, I think he killed, what, 19 children and two adults. Um could have, should have the police intervened, in my opinion, yes. I don't know exactly what they were waiting for. Maybe, you know, it was the wrong time in their biorhythm cycle. But um, the issue with Uvalde did bring something kind of out or back out in public because this has existed for a while. Um, so in June of 2022... You know, the police with the Uvalde School District um, come under fire for, and, and excuse, it's not really a pun, they came under fire for failing to respond. Which then leads to the next question of, you know, are the police obligated to protect you? And you're going to be shocked at the answer. Or at least with the inf at least based on the information I was able to uh, collect, some of you by now are going well. All right, Alan, I've heard some of your other podcasts. Where are you going on this one? Okay, so where I'm going is this: there, the police have no specific obligation to protect you. Period. And you're going, you know, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And I'm going, well, yeah, you know what? You're right. Um, where did this come from? Supreme Court. Um, this occurred, I think some of these go back into the 80s, 90s, uh, even to the um, shooting at um, the uh, high school in Florida where the question was, did the police adequately respond? And I think in one of the cases, there was video of the of an officer kind of hanging out outside the building, you know, because it was a little dangerous inside the building. Um, okay. And by the way, I'm not making light of the people that died in there. But what you're looking at in some ways 
it's a weird confluence of events. So you have police trying to respond. You have bad decision or bad decision making processes occurring. Um, you know, in Uvalde, the police are already there. Well, let's just wait. Well, for how long? I don't know. Well, let's just wait. Okay. So nothing happens except a couple of adults and a ton of children are massacred. So where am I going with the Supreme Court? Well, based on a couple of lawsuits, um, it actually can't, it actually, the interpretation was the police have no duty or no specific duty to protect you as an individual. Their obligation is to the community at large. Now, you'd like to think that if you're part of the community, their job is to protect you. But like everything else that goes on in this country, people have brought lawsuits and they've brought, um, or not brought, but they've caused, you know, interpretations to set precedents for other cases. Um, so does that mean we shouldn't have police? No, hell no. <laughs> I think we need to have more police. Um, do I think police should be disarmed? No, they probably need more or better weapons. Um, but knowing that they can't physically be there to protect you 24 seven, what the police are saying as a whole is you need to do whatever you need to do in order to protect yourself or ensure that you and your family are safe until we can get there. And that last part, the until we can get there is critical. So somebody comes and says, well, you know, we don't want guns out there. Guns are bad. All right, so the law-abiding citizens give up their guns. Well, I'm pretty sure the criminals will not. Um, and the reality is, I'm a gun enthusiast. I'm a gun dealer. And the reality is, I understand it's my responsibility to do whatever I can to protect myself and my family until the police can get there. And I think we have to keep all of that in mind. I, what I would like to suggest is that Uvalde, Texas is a bad example of making the right decision or a good example of making bad decisions. Simply put, is don't use that as a benchmark to measure all the other law enforcement officers and their agencies. I believe that they're doing the best they can with the resources they have. And if there aren't enough of them, maybe we need to address that problem. So, sorry for taking a long-winded approach, but the part that I found what said... The um, there's no specific obligation to protect you was like, huh, OK, because um, I always grew up with the, you know, the whole protect and serve thing that was actually coined by some California police department. Um, but in the meantime, Alan's advice, make sure you and your family are protected. Make sure that you have a plan that you can protect yourself, protect, protect your family, even your pets, until the police get there. And that would be the best answer I could give. You know, the best defense is a strong offense. I'm not saying go out there and shoot everybody in sight. But if someone's coming at you with a gun and the only thing you have is a phone. 
you better hope that there's a police officer up the road from where you are and can get there.